Hi everyone, today I want to discuss the second fundamental theorem of calculus and the chain rule. So in previous videos I've gone over how you can use the FTC2 to, you know, compute derivatives of functions that are written in terms of integrals. And today I want to show you what you can do to compute such a derivative when the upper bound of the integral is a function, okay? So basically you gotta use the chain rule, okay? So yeah, let me show you uh, what we can do. So first, I'm going to write the FTC2 just so that, you know, I can use it to refer to some pieces of information. So we know that d uh, over dx o of the integral, so the derivative of the integral uh, from 0 to x of any function f of t dt, we know this is going to be equal to f of x, okay? Small f of x, okay? So this is the FT, uh, FTC2, and of course, this is only true if f is a continuous function, okay? So I want to, you know, uh, what I want to emphasize today is what we can do if we don't have x as the input for our function, but if we have another sort of function, okay? So uh, let me give you this example. So let's say that we have g of x is going to be some function. I'm going to say that it's going to be the integral. Uh, let's just choose, oh, and I'm sorry, I wrote here zero, but this is actually, you know, any constant. So let's just say this is a. Uh, now I'm going to say that this one is actually zero, this one is, is a, can be any constant, but this one I'm just going to say it's zero, and I'm going to say that the upper bound, uh, let's say it's going to be x squared, okay, so the upper bound is going to be another function, x squared, and let's say that uh, the downy function that we have, this, you know, this placeholder function, uh, let's say it's just going to be something simple, I'm just going to choose, you know, sine of t, okay, sine of t dt, okay, so this is what we have. Now, what if we wanted to find the derivative of g? Well, we know we can use FTC2 to do that, but there's going to be something interesting here. So since x squared is a function, we can do what we used to do with the chain rule. We're going to introduce a new variable, and we're going to let that variable be equal to the expression that is giving us trouble, which in this case is going to be x squared, okay? You would like to have a single input, a very simplified input at the upper bound, but instead x squared, it's kind of complicated to deal with. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna define a new variable. I'm just gonna let it be equal, I'm just gonna, you know, choose u. So I'm gonna say that u is gonna be equal to x squared, okay? The function that is giving us trouble. Now I'm gonna rewrite g in terms of u. How can I do that? Well, we know that a function in terms of u, so uh, this would be g of u, where u is a function of x, so I'm just going to write u of x, just so that we know that u is a function of x. So g, g as a function of u, which is a, a function of x, is going to be the following. It's going to be the integral from 0, the lower bound that we chose, all the way up to u, because u is going to be equal to x squared, which is, you know, what we had before, and the inner function, the integrand, is going to, you know, stay the same, okay? So this is just going to be sine t dt, okay? So... If we want to find uh, the derivative of g, which is a function of a function, well, we can use the chain rule as we did before, you know, before calculus 2. In calculus 1, if we had a function of a function, we took the derivative of the outside function and then multiplied by the derivative of the inner function, okay? We're going to do exactly the same thing here, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue down here. So I'm going to say that uh, g prime of... Uh, this is going to be with respect to x, so g prime of x... Is going to be equal to, so I'm going to write it like this so you know what we're doing. So d over du, and you're going to see why I'm choosing u and not x, from 0 to u of sine of t dt times, so remember when we used to do the chain rule, we did d, d, we took the derivative with respect to u, which is what d over du means. So we did d over du times du divided by dx, and in this case, x is going to be the input for u, okay? So in this case, this is just going to be du uh, divided by dx, okay? So this is the chain rule. In this case, well, what is this going to be? This is just going to be a function, okay? So, you know, uh, in calculus 1, if you wanted to take the derivative of a function that was uh, that was the function of a function, well, you just simply took the derivative of the outside function. The outside function is going to be this, and then you multiply by the inner function. Our inner function is going to be x squared, okay? And our outside function, well, it's going to be u, uh, it's going to be this, the integral from 0 to u, where u is an input, okay? 
So this is going to be the outside function and the inner function is going to be x squared. We take the derivative of the outside function and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function, okay? And now this is, you know, this product is very easy to compute. What is the derivative of, uh, of this integral? Well, we know based on FTC2 that this is going to be equal to sine of u, okay? Because, well, this is going to be our dummy variable, t is our dummy variable, and we want to replace our dummy variable with the actual input of the function, okay? So this is going to be sine of u. We have sine of u times du dx. Now, du dx is going to be u prime, which is 2x, okay? So this is going to be times 2x, okay? Now, we know how much u is equal to. We know u is going to be equal to x squared. So this is going to be sine of x squared times 2x, okay? And, you know, if you want to write it in a better form, uh, you can just say that g prime of x is going to be equal to 2x times sine of x squared, okay? This is what g prime is equal to, okay? And you can see it's pretty simple. You know, it is very similar to the chain rule from calculus one. So yeah, that's how you can compute, uh, you know, how you can use the FTC2 when the upper bound is a function and not, you know, not a single input, okay? So yeah, that's been uh, the entire video. Uh, I hope that, you know, you, you enjoyed it. Uh, this is really cool. So uh, th this is really cool and it's really helpful because a lot of times your upper bound uh, is gonna be with respect to another. It's gonna be, usually you don't wanna have a single input. When you're solving different types of problems, usually you want to make your upper bound vary with respect to some other quantity. And that quantity is really an acid function. So your upper bound is gonna be a function and well, you, you're, you're gonna have to use this technique, okay? So yeah, that's been the entire video. I hope that you enjoy. This is a really cool topic. You know, this concept is pretty interesting. So yeah, uh, see you in the following video, bye.